actually a best friend that you can ever buy because there's always different needs for different people. So here are some good phones that I think are worth the money and they are right under $300. Now, number one, and this is actually going to be a very odd one from the list, is called the Lenovo Z6. Now, hear me out because I know you've already gotten ready to click off the video because I haven't called a Xiaomi phone yet. Now, hear me out, just hear me out. This is the younger brother of the Lenovo Z6 Pro, which most people should have heard about. That one had the Snapdragon 855, didn't have a high refresh rate screen and then all that jargon. But then this one, what actually makes me add it to the list is the fact that it ticks a lot of the boxes for a 2020 smartphone, even though it was released in 2019. So you ready for these? Snapdragon 730, 4,000 milliamp power battery with support for 15 watts fast charging, a 6.39 inch 1080p Super AMOLED 120 hertz display, triple camera setup on the back. I mean, you've already had these specs, and I'm pretty sure your brain is going like, cause. When I came across this phone the first time, I didn't actually want to glance at it. But then I looked at this spec sheet and I was actually totally amazed. Now, for some people, the screen is a bit much. It's huge to some people. They want a small phone. That's where the second option comes in, which I know some people are going to bite my head off for, but it's the LG G7. Now, the thing with phones of 2020 or trying to find a good phone in 2020 is that no manufacturer actually makes a small phone most people are trying to push past the six and a half inch size so for the Lenovo G7 thank you which is a 6.1 inch screen it's a good point it's a good starting point for someone who wants some decent performance and a decent screen size now it does have its caveats it has a notch not the teardrop notch i mean a notch but not the iphone's notch it it's just a notch you get what i mean but then aside the notch and the battery which is a 3000 milliamp power battery you can't really go wrong with this one because this phone is meant to be a flagship so it's given flagship treatment it has a snapdragon 845 dual camera setup which is well it can throw some people up especially since we have a lot of phones boosting four cameras but then like i keep saying for those phones those phones don't actually have four cameras they actually have only two cameras the rest are normally just a depth sensor or a micro sensor which is useless in my opinion this has a 16 megapixel main camera and a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera, which is fine. It has Gorilla Glass 5 on both the front and the back. It's a good phone. If you're someone who doesn't want the bleeding edge of performance, but you want flagship grade performance for a not so high price, this is a very, very good phone for you. Now, let's say you're someone who doesn't want the Snapdragon 845 because you're thinking many other chips that we've made or rather we've come across in 2020 outperform the Snapdragon 845 then maybe the Redmi 9 is a good phone for you MediaTek Helio G80 5020 milliamp power battery with support for 18 watts fast charging 6.53 inch 1080p LCD display Gorilla Glass 3 what camera setup? I mean, you can't really go wrong there. It's a decent phone and it will serve you decently well. Now, it does have a little bit of a caveat, which is the gyroscope. Now, if you're someone who plays games like PUBG, like me, then the lack of this gyroscope is actually going to mean that the phone is going to try to use the accelerometer to do gyroscope related functions. And because of that, you, you will notice a little bit of a gyroscope delay 
So if you plan on picking up this phone, the Redmi 9, for gaming, I wouldn't really advise that you be a gyroscope player or you just learn to deal with the lag. It's just a small thing. And for all these phones that I've mentioned, I'll link an appropriate review. This isn't a review video, I'm just highlighting all of these phones for you. Now, let's just say that you feel like the Redmi 9 isn't your cup of tea, then maybe the Redmi Note 9 will do. Now, the Redmi Note 9 is it's fundamentally the same phone as the Redmi 9, which is why I had a little bit of an inner conflict when I was trying to decide whether I should put this phone here or not. But the only difference between this phone and the Redmi Note 9, the Redmi 9 has a water drop notch, whereas the Redmi Note 9 has a punch hole display. Uh, and that's basically it. But now for fifth place is a little bit of an awkward one. Now you may notice that many of these phones I've called are not exactly what you would expect from a typical video. The next one is Nokia 5.3. Hear me out, hear me out first. It has the Snapdragon 665. It has a 720p IPS LCD screen. It's covered with Gorilla Glass 3. It has a quad camera setup. It has a 4000 mAh battery. And it's on Android One. Okay. Now, why is it number five on the list? One, the processor. The Snapdragon 665 is not exactly. It's not exactly a good chip for 2020. That's one. Two. This phone does not support any form of fast charging. It stops at 10 watts. And in 2020, that. That's absolutely stupid. Like, it's it's ridiculous. It's stupid. I, I just don't get why anyone would do that in 2020. Nokia, I, I feel like you guys messed up in this regard. And then it also has Bluetooth 4.2, which is old. Now, the average consumer may not notice that this phone has Bluetooth 4.2 and Bluetooth 5, which many of the other phones have. But... For the average tech nerd or someone who's more interested in every single specification that the phone will give, you will definitely notice this, especially as an audiophile, because that little bit of latency that is reduced from Bluetooth 5 to 4.2 will be very, very noticeable in video. Now, these are my top five good smartphones that you can get for around $250 to $300. But now, there are some honorable mentions that I want to add in. The Infinix Note 7 is a good phone. Now, the problem with this phone is, one, it's a 6.95 inch screen. But then, it's not only about the 6.95 inch screen. It's also the fact that it's a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, which makes it extremely tall. Like, it's scary how tall it is in person. Now, if you have average size hands, for me, well, I can use the phone very comfortably with one hand. I can't reach up to the edges, of course, but I use it comfortably with one hand. It has a MediaTek Helio G70, which is a step down from the Redmi 9, which has the G80. And then what makes me not to add it on this list, because it has a 5,000 mAh power battery, 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM, 18 watts fast charging. The problem I have with it is one, there's a lot of bloatware in the interface, but then you see that also in Xiaomi phones, so that's not really a big deal. My big sticking point is the fact that it's still trapped with USB instead of USB Type C. Now, you can opt to go for the Infinix Note 8 or the Note 8i, which have the G80. But then, this one just got released very recently, and I don't know whether it's been seeded out properly. And then with a lot of scalping that I've been seeing on the internet, with the PS5 and RTX series, and I just say, hold off on those newer releases for now. Wait a bit later, if you want to get the Infinix Note 8, you won't regret it. 
for sure you won't regret it. Now, if you don't want to spend that much money, but you still want the same performance as the Infinix Note 7, then go for the Infinix Hot 10 or the Techno Spark 6. You won't regret it. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!